Hi there, welcome back for our second lesson in Benchmark 3. I'm going to real quickly wrap up seafloor spreading from lesson 1, and we're going to talk today about the theory of plate tectonics. So remember, seafloor spreading was found in the 1960s when scientists mapped the ocean floor and discovered that it wasn't just a flat, vast wasteland. There were actually lots and lots of um, mountain ranges where the crust was actually being torn apart. Okay, so Wegener was really challenged by his peers because he couldn't explain a force that could move continents. We know that the magma beneath the crust um, is potentially moving with convection currents that could be pushing or pulling on the plates. That's what we're going to call the crust that's broken into pieces. And what Harry has found is that there are areas where the crust is literally being ripped apart and he found that in his mid-ocean ridge, mid ridges. Now he was challenged to explain that if an ocean is getting bigger where is the flip side to that? Where is the reverse? Where is the crust being chewed up and recycled back into the mantle? Because you can't just keep making the Atlantic Ocean bigger without um, reducing the crust somewhere else. And so we actually found within the oceans that there were places where the crust was being pushed down back into the mantle. And that's called subduction. You'll see that I've attached some page numbers for you to look at, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it here with just this map. So this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's huge. This is a mountain range that um, actually starts in the Arctic and goes nearly to the Antarctic. Um, Iceland is actually part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that is um, visible at the surface. So it's actually part of that ridge. But there are other parts of the ocean where the crust is being scrunched together and we have what's called a trench. Okay, and these trenches in the ocean are incredibly deep and the ocean crust is being bent and pushed back down into the mantle. Now today we're going to talk about all the different ways that crust can interact and why, for instance, along these trenches especially in the Pacific, um, create all kinds of volcanic islands and are very volatile places for both volcanoes and earthquakes. And some of you may know that the outer edge of the Pacific is sometimes called the Ring of Fire. So anywhere you see trenches, that's where crust is being pushed back into the mantle. Anytime you see places that are ridges, like for instance, there's one in the Indian Ocean, that's where crust is being pulled apart. So We've got the theory of continental drift from Alfred Wegener. We have the theory of seafloor spreading with plenty of evidence from Hess. And this last theory, this last piece of modern evidence is actually a theory of plate tectonics. And we have, um, and there's a nice picture here. You can find a bigger one online if you'd like. This is a picture of what we believe to be all the active plates on Earth right now and the direction that the plate is currently moving. And by looking at the current movement of plates, we can kind of guess where they used to be millions of years ago and where they're going to be um, millions of years in the future. So this is basically the Earth's crust in a whole bunch of different bits and pieces. So you got the Mid-Atlantic Ridge here. You can see the arrows going away from each other. Um, they're diverging. We have Another line here as part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Um, we're going to talk a lot about plate boundaries today. That's all part of the theory of plate tectonics. So this was kind of the unifying theory. Again, I'll attach some book pages for you to take a look at. It was kind of taking Alfred Wegener's theory, Harry Hess's theory, and putting it into one nice neat package. So we have the theory that the plates are basically riding on convection currents of the magma, the stenosphere, and the mantle. And we have three main ways that plates can interact with one another. They can slide past each other, they can squish together, or be spread apart. So I'm going to talk about these boundaries. You're going to see some sketches, and there is an option for you to draw these at home if you'd like. 
And then there'll be some other optional activities later in the week for you to go further if you'd like to know more about why certain um, types of volcanoes occur and earthquakes. So there's lots and lots of stuff you can do with plate tectonics. All right, this is called a transform boundary. Uh, if two plates are rubbing against one another, okay, so uh, they're not going towards or away from each other, they're kind of just sliding past each other, uh, there's a tremendous amount of friction between these two plates. So this would be a fault line in between them. And when this occurs, you can get fault lines that can go for miles and miles. And oftentimes they get stuck. And as soon as the plates let loose, and we're talking movement of maybe a couple centimeters, tremendous amount of energy is released. Imagine stretching a rubber band and then just letting go. A lot of earthquakes occur at transform boundaries. So the San Andreas Fault in California is a really good example of a transform boundary. Uh, there's a long, long fault and then other fault lines that branch off of it that runs almost the entire length of California. Okay, a divergent boundary is what we've been talking about with the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. A divergent boundary, diverge just means to go apart, is where two plates are moving away from each other. So the plates separate and allow a crack to form where magma is coming up from the asthenosphere. So this is pictured as if it were in the bottom of the ocean. And as new crust comes up, it kind of piles up on top of one another and forms these ridges or mountain ranges. And then eventually there's no more room and the crust will push apart as it's continuously being pushed up from the mantle. So divergent is apart. Now, I don't think I have a picture for it. Nope. This can occur on land. There is a divergent boundary in Africa. It's called the Great African Rift Valley. And there are two pieces of continental crust that are coming apart. Um, in fact, it's theorized that part of Africa will eventually break off, kind of like Madagascar has. All right, now there's actually three kinds of convergent boundaries we're going to talk about. Converge just means to come together. And there's three because you can have three different combinations of crust. You can have ocean crust and ocean crust combining. Um, ocean crust is made of basalt, and it's very, very dense. Um, you can have an ocean crust meeting up with a continental crust, which we'll see on a different slide and then two continental crusts come together. So this is a really great example of what has happened in Japan. So Japan is a volcanic island chain. And what has happened in Japan is the Pacific plate um, has run into another plate of ocean crust, okay? And they're kind of like doing battle. This piece of crust actually gets hung up on the other piece that's being pushed down into the asthenosphere and it creates a really deep ocean trench. So some of the deepest ocean trenches in the world are along the Pacific Rim. Um, the Marianas Trench is the deepest. You should look that up. It's pretty cool. So as the lithosphere gets pushed down in, it actually melts. Now some people are like, why doesn't it melt right here? It's not melting at the trench. It's actually melting where it's hot enough in the asthenosphere to melt. Now magma, because it's hot and in liquid form, will be less dense and rises to the surface and becomes a volcanic island. So over time, volcanoes erupt and they form island chains. And normally in these type of situations, you find the, the island chain and the trench just offshore. All right, so this is an ocean-ocean boundary, convergent boundary. Okay, um, this actually occurs on the west coast of South America. Okay, so there's a very big mountain range on the west coast of South America, and there's some really deep trenches too. So this is ocean crust. This is continental crust. Uh, continental crust is actually made up of granite, which is a lot less dense than basalt. So this crust is running into this crust. Now, the ocean crust, because it's much more dense, will be pushed beneath the continental crust. And there's still going to be trenches offshore. Only this time, the volcanic chain is a continental mountain 
range. All right, so we have a volcanic mountain range. Now, I didn't mention this on the previous slide, but when crust is being pushed down into the mantle, that's also an opportunity for huge earthquakes, um, especially since it can happen very, very slowly. So earthquakes are always possible around boundaries like this one and the one just before it. All right, so this was kind of interesting. Um, this is if two continental crusts collide. Now, what do you see missing from this picture? There's, there's no volcanoes, and there's a reason for it. Continental crust is so much less dense than, let's say, the oceanic crust. It never makes it down into the asthenosphere to melt. All right, so you might get some parts of the lithosphere, but not the actual continental crust. So the Himalayas are formed uh, when two pieces of continental crust collide. And these are some of the biggest mountain ranges in the world. There's also some huge earthquakes that can occur as these mountain ranges are forming. So very, very tall mountains. None of them are volcanic, but you can have a lot of earthquake activity. So these are some pictures that I drew with my students last year. This is not a graded assignment, but I did put the document in the agenda if you want to practice drawing them. Um, this is just getting to know the different boundaries. So just to review, a transform boundary is a fault where two plates slip past each other. You can have earthquakes, sometimes some small ridges and mountains. Here's my example of a divergent boundary. Okay, this one's the ocean crust, like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here's that rift valley I was talking about that occurs in Africa. Lots of earthquakes. Um, underwater volcanoes are totally a real thing in the Mid-Ocean Ridge. Um, Iceland is a totally volcanic island nation as well. Okay, here's our ocean crust meeting ocean crust. There's our, our volcanic island chain. This is our first convergent boundary. Our second convergent boundary where ocean crust meets continent crust. Lots of volcanoes, lots of earthquakes. And our final, where two continental crusts collide, big, big, big mountains, but no melting. However, lots of earthquakes. All right, so I'm going to do a couple optional lessons on earthquakes and volcanoes for you. What I would like you to do for the assignment for this activity is I'd like you to watch this YouTube video. Um, this is something that you can actually do at home. You can model all the plate boundaries using things at your house. So graham crackers, um, fruit roll-ups, frosting. Watch the video. It's totally optional if you want to do it at home. But you have to watch the video to answer these five questions. So you are going to have to watch very carefully. I would read the questions before you watch the video. And you can stop and pause and look for the answers. Type them, one, two, three, four, five, in the box, and that will be your graded activity for Benchmark 3 Lesson 2 on Play Tectonics. And don't forget to read the attached pages from the book to help you understand more about plate boundaries.